Hello everybody and welcome to Grinning Studios Let's Play. That's right, Grinning Studios has a Let's Play series and this is our first uh, monetized one. So we're going to be playing Divinity Dragon Commander. Yep, so I uh, sent a message to Larian Studios asking them, hey, I'd like to do some videos and I'd like to put them on my monetized YouTube channel and they said, Go for it, have fun, and I'm going to show you this awesome game. Thank you, Lyrian Studios. You guys rock for making a great game and for letting me do this. So first, we're gonna start off with options. You wanna go into gameplay, and you're gonna notice the difficulty, the, the game speed. Uh, change the difficulty if you want a better game, and change the game speed if you're kinda slow with the RTS stuff. So you can put it down to slow. Or, well, I'm gonna just put it to normal since uh, I'm pretty good, decent with the uh, RTS. I'm gonna put the difficulty on hard. Uh, get rid of this tutorial mode thing because it's kind of annoying. It'll pop up all the time. Ugh. Uh, okay, simple unit you know, deselection. That's good. Show cutscene subtitles. Uh, yes, uh, everything is good here. So we're just going to apply, accept, and let's go to. Uh, audio settings. You want to turn the music down. You don't want it too much. I turn it way down for the video. Uh, I don't want you guys to be overpowered with music, but I want the speech to be up there. I want you to hear what they're saying and stuff like that. But uh, as a let's play, let's let's put these down so that you're not assaulted with sounds and, and music and stuff. Go ahead, apply, accept, and we're gonna start a brand new game. Uh, go ahead, back, and single player. We're gonna do, there's four different options. So you got the story campaign, uh, custom campaign, skirmish, back, uh, skirmish, yeah. Anyways, we're gonna play a cam uh, story campaign. And you got uh, your dragons that you can choose from. Um, you got the mountain dragon, which is like a, a mean fire breathing machine. Lots of damage, lots and lots of damage. Uh, he's he's pretty good uh, for offensive. And then next you've got the Zephyr Zephyr Dragon, which is more like a heal all your units and do very little damage type of unit. Uh, and then you've got the Saber Dragon, which is the middle of the road for them. I'm gonna choose the Mountain Dragon. I like the assault the. Uh, offensive force offensive capabilities of this dragon so uh, it also comes with some researched technology down at the bottom uh, for each one has four different already researched technologies uh, yeah so I like the look of the saber dragon better than the others but uh, I like the utility of the mountain dragon better all right, let's go for it. Thousands of years ago, Sigurd I built incredible engines of war, and with them, forged an empire. The emperor married and sired many children. He even had a love child with mysterious Aurora, an ancient dragon in a woman's guise. Once united, peace was declared in Rivalon, and bloodshed soon forgotten. But Sigurd's realm of peace was shattered when his own sons and daughters rose against him. War returned with a vengeance, and annihilation reached new heights. Desperate to safeguard Sigurd's legacy, the wizard Maxos sought the help of the one child that never betrayed his father, Sigurd and Aurora's son, the half-dragon prince. He would be the one to save the empire from ruin and, to aid him in his quest, Maxos delivered unto him the Imperial command ship known as the Raven. This is the story of Maxos and the Dragon. This is the story of the Dragon Commander. Hey, that's me. I'm the Dragon Commander. So I'm going to be playing this as if I was the Dragon Commander. Do a little role-playing type of thing here. Let's see how that works. Alright, 
Mm, my newspaper. Oh, I need some coffee. Sigurd, Emperor of Rivalin, uh, murdered sons and daughters go to war. Siblings vie for the blah 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 blah. blah. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, gold pr prices skyrocket. War not all bad. Oh, look at this. There's my political intrigue right there. Dwarves, elves, uh, lizards, imps, undead. You got five different ones here. Hmm. No. Okay, and uh, you can look at those later. No, not really need to look at them now. Welcome, noble dragon, no, thank you. to the Raven. This wonder of engineering, this miracle wrought in magic that has a living demon for a heart. Uh, a living demon, you say? <sighs> I like demons. Demons are cool. Uh, so tell me more about this. Between the knowledge I shall pry from this infernal creature's cryptic mind and the avalanche of tomes, manuscripts, and blueprints aboard awaiting study, we will catch up with our enemies in no time and claim back the lands they have taken by force. Yeah. Our task is monumental, but okay. we will not have to face it alone. Two famed generals are here already. Great. Loyal to the legacy we are trying to save, and therefore loyal to you. Mm. Given time. 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 We don't have much time. We've got a let's play to do. I have furthermore enlisted the service of Grumio, an imp of devilish cunning that can fashion anything my research will uproot. Already he has created you a wonder he calls a jet pack. Excellent. Jetpack. <laughs> Talk to these men, get your bearings, and begin your conquest. If you have any more questions, you can find me in the royal chamber, which I shall use as a study. All right, then. Uh, nice to see you, Mr. Wizard Maxwell. Good luck, Dragon. Thank you. May the divines be with you. Hell yeah, may they all be with me. Thank you very much. You may go. Um, exit right stage. <laughs> Where's that left? Exit left. Yeah, Maxos is gone. So, hey, we're going to play this game. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks and stuff like that. And, uh, um, yeah, this is the main area. Right there you see your map. You go into the RTS strategy part. Not the actual RTS, but just to the strategy where you move your units around and whatnot. Uh, and this is your map. First, uh, you get three acts, act one, act two, act three. The first act is pretty small. It's more like a tutorial more than anything else. You can grab your units and move them around by clicking on them and just moving. Them. This is all the cards that you get. You get cards that you can play during uh, your round, which give you bonuses or sabotage the enemy units. And then you've got the mercenary units, which are your best cards. You're, you're going to love those. Use those. Yeah, you're going to want to get those. Those are your main goal to get. Get mercenary cards. They're very useful. Very, very useful. So, uh, yeah. And the other cards, yep. These cards are the least useful because they're dragon powers that you'll pretty much get. Uh, you'll, you'll research them anyways. So they're, they're pretty useless. Pretty useless. Uh, all right, let's go on, move on. Over here, you've got your empire overview. You can see how people like you or how they don't like you. In other words, the dwarves, elves, imps, lizards, undead. And that is a dwarf, but uh, I want to change it to a different look. But yeah, it doesn't change. So I have to look at that dwarf. Great, fantastic. I wonder what that means. We'll see later. Is to end your turn, and and all your, the moves that you've made here will finalize and actually go into effect. And uh, down here is go back to the bridge. So that's that screen. Now we're gonna go on with the story. First, let's oh, check this arm out. Yeah, let's talk to this guy. Let me tell your right of the bat bastard that I hold you in very little regard. Great. Your father may have been a great king once, but this last decade. A crown pig would have played the part better. I'm about ready to rip that arm off of you and shove it up your... Anyways, let's... Wh what? He became a vainglorious fool, yeah. a sloth, and a coward. No wonder then that his own children could amass armies unperceived and strike at the heart of a kingdom in a matter of days. 
Yeah, okay. Well, I'm not gonna argue too much with that, but... He tried to run, uh. but he failed. And they slew him where he stood. Now the realm has been shattered, and vultures are picking what they can from his corpse by means of new and terrifying war machines. Yeah, I've got some terrifying war machines, too. Still, I want to... I'd say all is lost, but Maxos insists you are to be the one, the hero, who will take back the land we've lost. Excuse me if I laugh in derision. Ha 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 ha! Your laugh sucks. I can do a much better laugh. <laughs> Still, yeah. you are a dragon, I'll give you that. And of ancient blood. That's right. Prove to me you have the rocks to do undaunted battle, and perhaps... My respect may still be yours. Got diamond balls, biatch. All right, uh, yeah, so, hmm. Do you have a name, my good... Uh, why do I have to say this? I want to say something. Henry of the House of Lancefoot. Oh, great. More you need not know. That's right. I don't really even want to know you. Uh, tell me about this colleague. Uh, Edmund, guy. he's called. A lizard of the House of Carcharus. In truth, I'd rather sleep with Syphilis Incarna than have him aboard. Do it. But there's no denying his talent. He's as arrogant as he is astute, and as ingenious as he is insufferable. Why don't you offer him a word of welcome? Well, at least he's got the ingenious I know I part. won't. You don't. <laughs> You're insufferable, but you don't have that ingenious thing. We're gonna I find believe him. he's in the bar. Yeah. Probably searching for Sherry. Just about the only drink that snooty serpent will swill. Sweet. Okay, you know I have a name, asshole. And it's not Bastard. Aye, and you have titles as well, but none of them king, as yet. I'll address you with the right regard the day you prove worthy of it. Oh man, I want to just turn into a dragon and eat you right now, but... Uh, go on, carry on. Go on with your bad self. I want to get indigestion with all that metal stuff you're wearing. Let's go to the bar. Hey, you're a right gentleman, aren't you? And there we have it, I suppose. The dragon son of a monarch deposed. Rightful heir to the throne, even if he was born out of wedlock. Yeah, happens. Yeah. So tell me a little bit. No doubt that bore of a Henry has already introduced me in his ever-elegant way. Ever -elegant. So here I am. Lord Edmund Augustus III. Duke of Hawknest Hall. I'd add at your service, but I don't think we're quite there yet. We're not. We're not. Trust me, we're not. To be perfectly honest, I'd normally entertain the idea of lending my expertise to your cause as curtly as I'd consider attending a dwarven opera. But not unlike my fellow general, it is Maxos's backing of this enterprise that has me intrigued. You have doubts benefit, Dragon. Let's see how far it takes you. Pretty far if we count how far I could throw you. I mean, you know, you can trust me as far as I can throw you. When one dwells among the highest echelons of power, uh, where ambition runs thicker than blood, yeah. distrust is your best friend, yeah, sure is. as is its brother, caution. In your case, though, the waters of misgiving run somewhat deeper. You are, after all, but a half-dragon. That's right. Half. Just like you would be half if I bit you in two. They call your kind dragon knights to lend an air of nobility to a lowly mixed breed. Lowly. Not many make the distinction even, but the crucial difference is impurity. Human ancestry taints your being, for humanity and weakness are two sides of the same tuppence I drop in beggar's hats. Did you say tuppence? What the hell's a... okay. A bastard twice are you, my lord. Bastard born and bastard bred. Hell yeah. Um, um, shut up. Shut up. Uh, what's your take on this war that has erupted, huh? Tell me about that. Only that it was bound to happen. For when an emperor weakens, his empire weakens with him. Now a litter of dogs is fighting for the throne. So maybe their dragon half-brother can walk away with it. Okay, I'm done talking to you. Man, you guys really bring me down. <sighs> All right, so this is the bar. It's kind of cool. Yeah, let's go on to the engineering bay. Hey, check this guy out. Greetings, sire, sprung from kings. Yes, sprung. I am Grumio, son of Gromeo, <laughs> an imp of good and honest standing. 
Your technician, shall I be, if it pleases you. Your engineer and architect. Well, you're such a joy to talk to after talking to that Edmund guy. Yeah. I hope you'll like my jetpack. It is my gift to you to keep without recompense, for gladly shall I remain aboard this wondrous ship to tinker and toy, hammer and hew. You're a delight. I like you in that eyepiece. She is special, this vessel, yeah. filled with wonders undiscovered. The wizard, he feels it too. The taste, the tingle of mystery. Oh, to unlock its secrets. Mmm, yes. Uh, how come you know so much about all of this technology stuff? Well, my lord, when your good father and Maxos first started to conquer the world with their fancy machines, uh -huh. we imps were mesmerized. None of us cared if we were being drafted into a strange warlord's empire, for if those were the weapons he wielded, we were all ready to welcome him with open arms. By golly, were we ever. Okay, cool. So, go on. Steam-driven giants on land, on sea, even in air. Oh, the ecstasy. Such wonders, such ingenuity, and jeepers, what cannons. Ever since then, some 30 years hence, us imps have dedicated our existence to the advancement of these delightful machines. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Now, before those blessed days arrived, people regarded us as eccentric gnomes taken do. to experimenting with flame, gas and liquid like so many charlatan alchemists. But <laughs> those days are over. We are scientists now, famed and fortuitous. I still think you're an eccentric gnome taken to experimenting with flame, gas, and liquid like so many charlatan alchemists. But, uh, you know, go on. You can think whatever you want about yourself. That's cool. The truth be told, though, we, we've never quite given up our love for all things combustible. Rather, on the contrary. Not that you mind, do you, my lord? No, blow things up. Just don't blow things up inside my ship, okay? We'll forge like not even a dwarf can, my All lord. Right. Let's do this. So here you've got uh, your user research. This is the stuff that you use in the RTS. You got basic, advanced, expert, and master. And the Act One um, tutorial, you can only upgrade basic and advanced. So uh, we've got 20 research points to deal with, and we definitely want the ironclad. I'll tell you why shortly. Uh, so we're going to buy that. Buy. Yeah. And uh, we're going to go to the basic, and we're going to get that uh, transport. That's going to be really important, too. And uh, the hunter. Got to have a bigger unit. Something. We want to get the armor, but we don't have enough for that, so we're going to get the hunter. Uh, hunter, yes. There we go. We used all our points. And we'll get these, all of these, uh, later. And this is where you can see the research that you have already researched. Let's close this and move on. Uh, look at that. Oh, check that guy out. He's like, what is he doing? Just like floating there, looking... That's awesome. All right, uh, moving on to the Royal Chamber. Hey, it's Moxos. Mr. Moxos, that's, that's really, hey, there's the newspaper. Ah, if I missed it the first time, I can read it again. Hmm, cool. Let's talk. Never hesitate to seek my counsel, Dragon Knight. Tirelessly I study and question in the knowledge that my discoveries will make you the mightiest dragon ever to have soared the skies. Tirelessly, I could sit here and click on you and you would say the same thing over and over again. That's fantastic. Never hesitate my ass. All right, let's move on. Tell me more. We too shall unite dragon's daring with wizard's wisdom. Nothing shall stand in your way. Nothing shall... Okay, so uh, tell me about war and peace, Maxos. How did we get to where we are now. That is quite a tale, my friend. So bear with I have me. A tale? I'm a dragon. Uh, you want to talk about my tale? <laughs> Go on. Since the dawn of time, beautiful Rivalon has been a stage of bitter rivalry, strife, and war. 
haughty humans, all too lofty lizards, dogged dwarves, erratic elves, irrational imps, dogmatic, undead, and yes, wayward wizards even, couldn't forego the time it takes for the moon to wax and wane without turning to fresh violence. You have an adjective for everyone, don't you? Peace. The word itself hardly had a meaning. It was an abstract. Until after long and dark ages, three men decided they had had enough. I was one of them. The other two were your father Sigurd, and an eccentric inventor known only, even by us, as the architect. We knew war would continue everlasting unless one king would stand up, conquer all feuding factions, and unite the manifold battling races under the banner of a single world-spanning empire. Easier said than done was, I believe, our initial reaction. Yeah, but you did it anyways. Good job. Now what? It was the architect who provided us with the answer to the question how on earth we would go about enacting such an unparalleled enterprise. Mm. He said he had ways and means to provide your father, a battle-hardened warlord in his own right, with engines of war such as the world never saw. Mm. Technology, that was the solution. For if we could go to war with weapons so vastly superior as to be unstoppable, every opponent would have to yield before our onslaught. Where the architect obtained his strange knowledge from, he never wished to reveal. But in truth, Sigurd and I cared little for his mysterious ways. For whatever the source, our plans worked like a charm. And in a matter of years, Rivalon was ours. Oh. Yes, we had done it. We had created our empire, and your father became its first and so far only ruler. For a few precious decades, peace had finally taken on a meaning. It was a bright flash, all too quickly extinguished along the tenebrous continuum of time. Tenebrous. That's a great word. Long have I asked myself that question. Yet the answer is as simple as it is obvious. Human nature. Love. Jealousy, anger, grief, all of these emotions proved more fatal to the stability of peace than a hundred thousand war machines could. Mm. All right, tell me more. You see, Sigurd, the architect and I, remained close friends after our quest had come to completion. But then, one fateful day, a woman of unequaled beauty arrived at court. After but a glance, there wasn't a man's heart in the room, not aching for even her mildest attention, or a most fleeting caress. Uh. Your father, though married, courted her, as did the architect. For myself, I'd admit I'd given up the very secrets of magic in return for her love, but I knew rivalry could only lead to misery. And so it did. For bitter rivals, my two friends became. And when, in the end, Sigurd was the one to win her affections, the architect left the palace with such hatred in his eyes as to strike me as diabolical. Ooh. So, yeah, this is a pissing match over a woman. A year their secret liaison lasted. One year your father and beautiful Aurora were happy together. Then suddenly she died. And it took me a long time to find out she did so at the hand of the architect. Sigurd never knew. He was destroyed by grief. The mighty warlord withered, and with him, the soul of his empire flickered like a candle in the breeze, until his own children blew it out forever, and hacked to pieces the land that was to have been his legacy. I see, so... I promise I will tell you in due time. For now, I must keep silent. Please, don't press me any further on the subject. What more can you tell me about uh, my mother, Aurora? Though I said I noticed from the beginning her beauty was of such perfection as to be supernatural, I soon discovered she was indeed more than human, and that the enchanting guise we saw her in was but a mask. Behind it lurked the dragon. Yeah, there's the good stuff. Go on. Yes, she was one of the ancients, interested in the ways of the infinitely lesser creatures we nevertheless call civilized. She was intrigued by Sigurd his war machines, and his empire. It led her to his castle, to a brief spell of passion, and ultimately, 
her downfall. So nobody really likes my father. Why? No one in Rivalon, save for you, Sigurd, the architect, and I know of Aurora and how her death affected your father. As far as most are concerned, he was a great hero who all too soon fell prey to indulgence, sloth, and alcohol, which lost him the affection of his children and in time started the war. I see. Go on. Go on. They are wrong, but truth will be revealed one day. Rest assured that when we finish our conquest and I can spend some leisure time in peace, I will write his history and yours too. Everyone shall know the tragedy that befell him and how his son, by the woman he loved, rose to save an empire. So, uh, what is our end goal? What is the final destination? In a few words, victory and destruction. First, we must vanquish all warring rivals for the throne. Then, we must undo the technology that enabled them to go to war in the first place. We will rekindle the empire of peace your father founded and be rid of the apparatus that might threaten it once more. Great. Uh, so I'm um, the bastard son thing. It shall be my honor. Research. Anyways, uh, yeah, my mother in, uh, oh yeah, dragon research. Okay, at the act one, uh, you can't actually research any of these above the basic. And, uh, yeah, they're all grayed out. So these are the only ones you can research for the act one just to let you know they're not all that important um let's uh move on shall we uh talk to him there go to the tome if you want ah, okay well i'm kind of depressed all right uh let's do some strategy stuff here let's move on with the strategy section all right your map and uh here you've got uh, a few islands up there One's not taken. Uh, there's the capital. You want to take that. If you destroy that, this Act 1 is over. So we're going to take that last. And you've got some islands over here that are not taken. And they've got some units on them, too. Once you take those uh, areas, the units will be yours. So uh, he's going to take those pretty quick, I'm sure. Um, yeah, we're going to get that area. we got to get that area pretty quick. Oh, he's got a lot of units over here. Uh, more units than we. We've only got four troopers. That's it. Um, he's got two hunters and two troopers. Hunters are much more powerful than troopers. We're gonna move this. We're gonna move one of these over here and take that area and buy some more units. Uh, hunters. We need hunters. We got 20 gold to, to start with. So let's get those hunters. Hunters. Yes, hunters. Uh, I'd like to buy some ironclads, but that's not going to be my number one focus at the very beginning. The very beginning is just getting some more units to protect my lands. Protect my lands! Okay. So we're going to go up that way as quick as we can. Oh, we can play a card if we want. Let's see what cards we've got to play. Uh, nothing here. Sabotage. That's it. Uh, I'm not going to attack them this round, but how about for our land? Oh, we've got, uh, ooh, increased gold revenue of this country by 200% for one turn. That's useful. Uh, do I use it now? Uh, no, I guess not. So, yeah, you can see it's only got one or four gold per turn, so that's not going to be really useful. Maybe if it gets up to, like, six gold per turn, that will be worth something. Uh, so we're gonna, that, that's pretty much, that's pretty much all that we can do here, I think. Oh, those transports are kind of dangerous. They can actually get in those transports and come on over, but they can only move three spaces. So you see that's one, two, this is, they can move over here. They can move, they can't move over there. They would take two turns for them to get over there. But, uh, yeah, we're gonna take that island pretty quick and take that island pretty quick. And this will be the first staging point where we'll get uh, some extra units. And then we're going to attack up to the left, and uh, yeah, that's that's our strategy. Just got to take care of those transports. Transports. Yeah, they're, they they might come over this way, so we got to keep it a little bit uh, fortified. 
fortify, yeah. All right. So uh, there's the gold that you make. And not much gold. You can play this card. I kind of want to take that. Let's see. I uh, might need that gold. Might need it. Uh, no, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna. Uh, even though I'm only gonna get four gold next round. So uh, that's that. We'll save. Uh, let's make this. Uh, what the? Uh, no. Grinning Studios. Yep. Always save before each round. That's a big thing. Save before you click the next round, the next end turn. All right, let's do this. End turn. Uh, everything moves. Ooh, he's got a parliament now. And he used a card against me. Ooh, damn, lots of units over there now. Shoot, that's gonna be a little bit difficult. Uh huh. All right, and he took that area just like I thought he would. Figures. Uh, so back to the strategy area. And yeah, he took that area with that transport. I'm gonna need to take that back. I've got a transport now too, so that's cool. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the strategy part real quick. Show you what needs to be done here. They get a lot of units over there. And we don't have so many units, but we can take them on. We can take them. Yeah. So move. Uh, no, we don't want to move that one there. Uh, yeah, no. No, no, no. We, yeah, there we go. We got to put that in there and move him over there so that we can get uh, that island. And we're going to move this guy right there. Pretty good. And uh, buy some more units here. We can't really buy much by one hunter one single hunter hmm. Ooh. oh well that's that's uh tough i sh probably should have played that card with the gold but oh well all right making one unit here and we're gonna go ahead and play that card now it's still only four probably should have played it before but oh well we'll play it now play the card All right, we got to take that area right there. Mm, he's got a lot of units. So he knows what we're going to do. He knows. We got to take that area. So, yeah. He's got another transport. Oh, that's that transport from over there. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm, I forgot to do something here. What did I forget to do? Mm, um, yeah, I know I forgot. Uh, yeah, I don't want to, mm. well, that's tough. This is really tough. Hmm, not really going as well as I was hoping it would go. Let's go back to the bridge. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and end it right there. Thank you for watching. We'll have some more strategy stuff, uh, in the future, and, uh, we really appreciate your likes and subscriptions please like please subscribe i uh, hope you enjoyed the video spread the bread butter spread the butter on the bread by butter i mean this video and by bread i mean the social networking platform of your choice come back for more and we'll uh we'll have more for you all right thank you very much boy boy now